Greetings to the House at Large and our Honorable Adjudicator. I am pleased to stand for you as the first speaker of Team Proposition. The motion at hand today is, this house would offer criminals sentenced to life imprisonment without parole the option of the death penalty. And we in the proposition completely agree with this motion. I, as the first speaker, will be providing this house with constructives, examples and rebuttals to support my sons. To expand our case, we'll have our second speaker come in, who will elaborate on my arguments and will present some fresh constructives along with a few rebuttals. Last but not least, our third speaker will be introducing us to some rebuttals and some examples to relate to the real world and will also summarize our case. My main points of argument will be, one, what is this motion? What is parole? Two, human alternatives. Three, this leads to stress and for societal considerations. Speaker two will introduce more constructives, namely one, deterrence, two, victim satisfaction, three, public opinion, and lastly, mental health. On that note, I would like to start with my constructives. Imagine you're sentenced to life imprisonment and all you have to do your whole life is stay in prison. So, that, uh, so in that restricted place, you are like a caged animal. Would you rather want to live in that suffocated, filthy place or would you choose to have a death penalty? It's better as you will be able to choose how you want to get the penalty. I know that we won't be getting into all deep stuff like reincarnation and a better life and a new start. But this is a simple model to introduce you and explain you the topic in simple terms. Moving on. Life without parole sentences can be effective in reducing the risk of grief. You are? Accepted. Uh, so, obviously, you to be put into uh, life imprisonment, that means you've clearly done something bad. So then do you think it should be up to the prisoner to have a choice not to stay in a filthy place? Isn't that opposite justice? Exactly as I said, it is completely and entirely the prisoner's choice whether he wants to have a death penalty or uh, or he just wants to rot, uh, rot in the filthy prison. Moving on. Firstly, let's clarify the terms involved. Life imprisonment without parole refers to a sentence where an individual convicted of a serious crime is confined to prison for the entirety of their natural life with no possibility of release. Proponents of this proposition argue that it offers a humane alternative for individuals who may prefer death over a lifetime of incarnation. They contend that such a choice respects the autonomy of the individual, allowing them to make a decision about the fate of their own lives. Proponents of the death sentence believe that it gives victims families with a sense of justice and finality. It allows individuals to choose the, uh, uh, to choose the penalty for the person who caused their suffering and loss. While acknowledging the complexity of the emotional impact of such a choice, proponents of this proposition argue that it allows impacted families to take a more active role in the, in the legal system. In conclusion, while the notion appears to provide an, uh, provide an option for people sentenced to life without parole, it raises a number of ethical, moral and legal issues. The balance between respecting human autonomy and preserving the core values of justice is delicate. As we wrestle with this concept, we must and must evaluate the far-reaching repercussions for our society. The criminal justice system and the heuristic value we place on human life is good. The decision we make today will determine the future of our legal and ethical landscape. And it is our job to assess the implications carefully and with proper regard for the, comple for the complexity involved. In the complex landscape of criminal justice, the question of whether individuals serving life without parole should have the option of the death penalty demands our attention. This is not a hypothetical scenario. It is a real-world dilemma that encapsulates moral, ethical, and legal considerations. On that note, I, Ryan Ravel, am proud to be a member of the proposition. Prison is where people who have done wrong can learn and prove. But if someone gets a life sentence, it means that it's something really bad. But we don't think they should get the easy way out by choosing a death penalty. We on the opposing side believe that everyone should face the consequences of their actions and work towards becoming better. Offering the option of death penalty takes away the chance for people to change and make up for their mistakes. We believe in giving everybody the opportunity to grow and learn and grow. And here's why. Our burden for this debate is to demonstrate the importance of why prisoners on life sentence should not 
be allowed uh, the option of death penalty and to argue against the motion. We aim to illustrate why these prisoners should not be allowed to take that option as it can benefit themselves, their, their families, and the other stakeholders in this debate. But before I start with my constructives, I'll let me rebut some arguments presented by my dear opponent. Firstly, dear speaker, you mentioned that it should be the prisoner's choice of where he rots. But if he is the person who's convicted the crime, why should he get the choice of what he does after he's convicted the crime? Isn't that the job of the criminal justice system? If the criminal justice system wanted, he could have been sentenced for a death penalty. But since they didn't do that, he should be able to improve himself in a life, sen life sentence. Because it's pretty obvious that he's done something extremely bad to deserve a life sentence. Now let's start with my constructors. My first constructive for this debate is mor moral and ethical considerations. People who disagree might say that letting the state offer individuals the choice of a death penalty raises big worries about what is right and fair. They think it's not good for the government to say it's okay for someone to choose to end their life. And that is true. The government no, should I... not say okay to someone who wants to end their life. No, not right I... now. Not right now. This goes against what is right and kind to a very a fair and caring society like this you're tearing the moral compass of people saying that to every problem there's an easy solution it's not always going to be like that the moral compass needs to be if you've done something wrong you need to do it right by the, the hard way if you want to do something you have to do the hard way there is no easy way to anything this is a really big problem because if people will end up going and the government will end up letting people take this choice, it makes things worse for everyone. It will send the message that it's Pure. okay to end your own life. Yeah, what's your pure? How does it make things worse for everyone? I would just like to know about this beautiful argument. See, if you're talking about a moral compass, a moral compass isn't going to be for one person. If one person has a moral compass, it's anyway spread it out. And obviously, prisoners do have visitors, right? They're not lonely people. So it will spread it out to everybody. And it's happened before. It's not the first time that somebody's moral compass has been affected. It happens before. It's happened very. It's happened many times. So it can happen again. So if we spread stuff like this, people will take the easy way out. My second argument is emphasis on rehabilitation. People who don't agree might say we should help those who make bad choices and give them a chance to change and become better by killing their lives. Instead of using a death penalty, they think instead of using the death penalty, we have other alternatives and we should use those. Like prison, they can reflect on themselves. By prison, they can rehabilitate their old ways and they can become better individuals. They can make a life in prison. I know they won't be released. They have no parole. But at least they know they did something wrong. And that way, if they have any family or anybody who visits something like them and they've made a bad role model, they can change the incentives to make them a good person. And with this, I'd like to end my speech. Thank you. Happy to propose. Prison is a hard place filled with hate, anger, depression, and loneliness. Greetings to the House at Large. I, Arshua Jain, as the second speaker from Team a proposition stands strongly in agreement with the motion. Before I begin, I would like to provide some rebuttals. The first speaker from Team Opposition mentioned that, um, you know, people would choose the easy oh. way out by choosing the death penalty. However, I ask you, is choosing the death penalty the easy way out? Is death really something that, you know, people think is the easy way out? I don't think so. In, uh, in our side, team proposition, give an option to the prisoner, whether the prisoner wants to stay alive and rot in prison or would the prisoner want to um, take the death penalty? It is all up to them. It is their choice. Now, another point mentioned by you was that uh, after he commits a crime, why should he be given a choice? Well, a choice over here is really not like, you know, do you want to eat pizza or do you want to eat pasta? It is not like that. It is a serious choice. Whether you want to stay in prison and rot your entire life or would you want to uh, take the death penalty and basically die? That is your choice. But then again, that is you your are... choice. Yes. Do you think the prisoner had the prisoner had the choice of not doing the crime and doing the crime? He did the crime, so he deserves the punishment. What do you agree, what do you say on that? See, we don't know what the reason might have been behind the crime. At times, the reason may just be suffering. But 
I know that is not just that is just one of the reasons that could have led to the crime being uh, happened. But like, what if it just happened and now the person regrets the crime, but still does not want to stay in prison, and because of that regret and that guilt that you know he committed that crime, he actually wants so that he doesn't need he doesn't do much um suffering in the world. Why for um killing yes. someone and that the so technically you're saying that um your life imprisonment is served because of the regret you feel. See, because of the guilt that the person felt. What if that person wants to improve himself or herself and does not find it justified to still live in the world? It is up to them. We we in preposition are not telling them that they need to take the death penalty or at the same time we're not telling them that they need to go to prison it is all their choice they, they either they stay in prison or they take the death penalty now moving forward moving to my constructives prison is a stressful place to live and work but the environment can add to the tension for prisoners overcrowding poor conditions lack of uh, lack of access to nature poor lighting and noise can impact on disorder and violence mental and physical health therefore my dear opposition would you rather wish to say stay in such an atmosphere or would you rather prefer dying but, but again as we reiterate it is an option it is open it is your choice you are not being forced to do it both are equally tough options some argue that the death penalty serves as a stronger deterrent to a uh, crime than life with parole as the fear of execution may discourage potential event, uh, offenders from committing um heinous acts the death penalty may provide a sense of closure and justice for victims and their families as it represents the ultimate punishment for the perp perp perpetrator the debate over the death penalty versus life without parole is influenced by public opinion which can shift over time for example um you know in california something had happened which was related to this the debate over the death penalty versus life with parole also raises question about the mental health of the inmates if ultimately they will die because of the mental strain in prison why probably they would probably just choose to die uh, by by choice instead of dying like this the use of death penalty is a threat and increasing number of people serving death uh, sentences of life without parole has raised legal and death penalty and life without parole is often influenced by factors such as um uh, juror decisions and legislative uh, considerations leading to disparities in sentencing the risk of executing innocent individuals is significant is a significant argument against death penalty um some argue that the death penalty is needed as a means of retributive justice to balance out the crime with punishment with that i rest my case but never my voice proud to propose thank you often to the house of lords the motion for the rand states that this house would offer criminal sentence to life imprisonment without parole the option of death penalty as dlo i would a rebut b present new constructions and c summarize the case for our side so far right before of my rebuttals four battles largely a would you choose to stay uh, um, the the pm uh, the pm question would we would you choose to stay in, in, in suffocated prison or, or get a death penalty right this is exactly an argument panel the prisoner the person shouldn't be given the uh, the option of a death penalty because it's an easy way out right whereas staying in jail will force them to reflect and feel remorse for the crime that they committed which clearly harmed the victim or the victim's loved ones to a great extent right B death penalty of the criminal gives the family of the victim closure. This is what the PM said right now. Now, don't you think that the proposition that it's more likely that the family will uh, feel like mercy was shown to the criminal get uh, because he he chose his death penalty, right? He he chose his way of dying. So wouldn't wouldn't you think that they would get aggravated with this? Because the truth is, the criminal chose this, right? He chose his death penalty. He chose how he dies. He chose whether he wants to get hung, whether he wants to get shot. He didn't psychologically suffer or feel remorse, right? He didn't feel guilt. Hence, this is more likely to anger the victim's family and loved ones more than more than the scenario that you suggest, right? 
Three. Proposition question of death was really the easy way out. Let me clarify here that it is not now because this is a criminal who's done something so bad that he earned himself a lifetime of imprisonment without parole, right? So this jail where he's imprisoned is bound to be very, very harsh and rightly so, right? So death would mean putting an end to his suffering. And when you think about it, he's choosing death penalty. That means he would rather die than be in that prison. That means that that prison is definitely more harsher than any uh, than than him dying, right? So obviously we would obviously give him the harsher the harsher thing here, right? Because he he earned it. He committed a really, really bad crime, right? We in opposition stand to being justice in our world. We, while proposition is practically standing for the criminals and getting them an easy way out, we stand for the for the victim and the victim's family who's uh, who's obviously suffered excessively due to the crime of this criminal, right? Enough so that he was sentenced to a lifetime of prison with no parole. For my argument then, uh, which is the risk of wrongful execution, right? what do we mean by this? We mean that it's also likely that the person's sentence is actually innocent and that he requested that penalty because he realized that he was stuck regardless of whether or not he was guilty, right? Why this is important then? A, for obvious reason, the death penalty shouldn't be allowed yeah. because to anybody because um, then the government is actually executing someone innocent, right? The, B, the blood is no longer on anyone else's but the government's hands because their jury and detectives faltered, uh, faltered and that cost a person in their, their life, right? An innocent person their life. Three, it's not fair for this framed you criminal and, and his loved ones either. We in opposition stand to protect the innocent, right? Yes, I'll take the POI now. Yeah, so are you clearly saying that death is the easy way out? He is filled with guilt and he is suffering and you say that death is the easy way out. No, are you saying that being bombarded with guns is the easy way out? Yes, we are saying that because I, I think I've explained this already enough in my rebuttals. Panel, please note that this is a repetition, right? So I will carry forward. Uh, for my for my second argument, then, which is the potential of discriminatory ap application of death penalty, right? Uh, so discriminatory, ap uh, discriminatory application of the death penalty refers to the unequal or, or, or biased implementation of um, of capital punishment based on factors such as uh, race, socioeconomic status, or, um, or legal representation. Right. This is important because it highlights the systematic injustice within the criminal justice system, where marginalized and vulnerable, vulnerable populations are more likely to receive the death penalty compared to the privileged individuals. Right. The disproportionate impact on these populations reflects a deep rooted inequality and reinforces the need for fair and unbiased sentencing uh, practices to ensure justice for all. Here, I would like to conclude my speech. Prato, Greetings course. to the Honourable Adjudicator and the House at large. As a member of the proposition side of the House, I would like to firmly stand by the motion that we believe uh, that prisoners should get to choose between, uh, that prisoners with no parole should get to choose between a death penalty and a life in prison. Before I sum up my teammates' arguments, I feel compelled to rebut the arguments made by my opponents. The opponents have constantly touted the claim that death is the easy way out, but this is simply not true. Death is a choice that is taken because someone feels that mm, they have suffered so much and are so guilty and don't want to uh, live anymore. So it's certainly not the easy way out and it's a very hard decision to make. Life in prison is horror filled and... Uh, and the justice system is just that, justice. It is not about revenge or vengeance. It is about uh, justice being served. And a death penalty would do exactly that. But a life in prison is cruel beyond comparison. Sexual and physical assaults happen there on a daily basis with, um, you know, with I, no seeing accepted. What justice would be served if you're killing an innocent person whose case is still going on? The choice, to, uh, the choice between a death penalty, uh, the choice between a death penalty and life in prison would, uh, would in our model occur afterwards, after the case has already concluded and after the trial has already concluded. And not to mention, as we have stated, as the uh, motion already states, there is a choice between wanting uh, to uh, wanting the death penalty or wanting life in prison. It is the choice of the prisoner. Uh, and also, perhaps, uh, the death, um, the prisoner chose the death penalty not because uh, it's the easy way out, but because the prisoner feels guilty. Guilt is a strong emotion and can make people do uh, things that no one would expect, meaning that, uh, meaning that it isn't necessarily the easy way out. And it could be that they cannot literally live with the guilt and would rather die than, um, than feel like they uh, deserve a place on this planet. As I have said earlier, justice and vengeance are two completely different things. Uh, vengeance is the system that uh, uh, the opponents are uh, suggesting, as living a life in prison is nothing less than a form of cruelty and suffering that no one deserves. And people should get to make the choice as to whether they want to live or die. That seems uh, like a basic right. 
Uh, and um, and as the and the opposition said that uh, the prisoner choosing a, a life penalty, uh, choosing a life sentence would be better than uh, choosing a death penalty because otherwise choosing a death penalty will hurt the victim's family as the victim's family will feel like they got mercy or maybe the victim's family will feel like uh, will feel like they have finally gotten some closure onto the case and feel like they can finally put this dark period behind them instead of knowing that the person who hurt their loved one is still walking. Um, is still walking, living and breathing. Maybe instead of wanting the person who hurt their family so much to be alive, they would instead just want closure and be able to move on. To sum up my teammates' arguments, prolonged suffering is a life wasted and vengeance and justice are two completely different things. And if we think that we should take away prisoners a prisoner's right to choice in life, this is simply not how the system works. And if we slowly decide to take these choices away, then we will then we, we will after a point delve into a society where no one has any choices this is what taking problem. um ladies and gentlemen as the third speaker of opposition in my speech i will do mainly three things firstly give rebuttals to the propositions arguments then three clashes and then summarization so um i would like to point out that the proposition kept talking about justice and then vengeance and justice however what their entire case is about that they feel that guilt should make up for the crimes the prisoner committed hence they should not suffer because feeling guilt because he feels guilty and hence should be given a choice to take the easy way out and i will talk about why this is so wrong in so many levels through my clashes. So um, coming to clash number one, should the prisoner be given the choice of choosing death penalty? Now we agree that freedom is something which you really need. But in this case, do you need freedom? Should the prisoner be given a choice? Absolutely not. Now the prop went on and on about how it should be the prisoner's choice to choose between imprisonment and death penalty, right? They spoke about human rights. The question I would like to ask is that should people who violate human rights in the first place, um, get to cheat their consequences out of the whole idea of human rights then isn't that going against human rights in the first place now why does the prisoner deserve a choice when he committed such severe crimes right because let us not forget this is not any sentence this is life imprisonment without parole which obviously means severe severe crimes have been committed we on the other hand stated that prison about uh, prisons for criminals sentenced to life imprisonment is an extremely tough and harsh environment right like the first speaker of proposition said it's like an animal in a cage and we feel that they deserve it right because they have done something to deserve of it now um in this prison you have obviously all the worst people put together who've committed crimes and now when we start giving the prisoner the option of death penalty all of them are going to start taking it so that they wouldn't have to suffer for the crime which they committed right because what would be easier just ending your life or actually suffering with people who are actually worse or as worse as you right so um, this is also not fair to the victim's family and there is no point of justice because justice is that you should be treated the way you treat others, right? Because we prove that in this case, prisoners do not deserve the choice of choosing a death penalty. Any POIs? Seeing none, I would like to move on with my speech. And uh, now, clash two. Is death penalty an easy way out? Now, the proposition first speaker said that prison is horrible and that death penalty is easier. So hence, um, hence, they should be given a death penalty's choice. The second speaker then spoke about how death and prison are equally tough. Um, again, they are not, like we explained multiple times. The second speaker then went on to say that um, prison life is really hard and hurts prisoners' mental health. That's why they should be given death penalty. The third speaker then said that the prison is horrible and assaults people. That's why they deserve the death penalty. Now, panel, how can we have a debate when the proposition themselves are not clear in their own stance and keep contradicting one another, right? Um, what they first, they, their entire case began with about how we're giving death penalty so that they can escape the life of prison because it's really harsh. And then they then went on to say that death penalty is equally hard. And it's not because we've shown you so many times how. Um, so we said that if we start giving these criminals the option of death penalty, then they're going to take it because life in prison is way harsh and they don't deserve to do that. So hence we win clash number two and this is basically refutes that entire case. However, I will then move on to clash three. What is better for society? Now, they did not touch upon society at all. They only focus on the prisoners. We are saying that um, if we support this motion, then A, not only will it hurt 
um not only will it show that there's no point of justice and go against the morals of justice and human rights but at the same time we will also show people that society and society that we should take the easy way out in life we should not suffer for the extreme wrongdoings we do and hence implies that we can do whatever we want without actually having repercussions let us not forget that the criminal chose to commit that heinous crime which he did and hence should face the consequences um we in the opposition should win this debate as we have proved um that one um the prisoner does not deserve the choice for the death penalty secondly death penalty is an easy way out thirdly it is harming society fourthly it is harming the victim's family and the victim and it can also when in cases when uh, the prisoner is wrongly convicted um it can also harm him and this is why the opposition should rise and the proposition should fall after once again this debate has gone on long enough for me to jump into winning this debate right away right so firstly remorse and influence in society what we've told you is four things largely a um the criminal must feel remorse to satisfy the victim's family right b they must feel remorse because he did something unspeakable of to the victim or the vic- or victims right and um see if he gets a death penalty he gets an easy way out i won't be clarifying this anymore because we've already repeated this so much in this debate it should be an obvious stance by now right d if we give the prisoner the easy way out then we're collecting then we're telling society that that you could commit a crime the worst crime possible to commit and you could disappear from the face of this earth without being truly punished right without being truly psychologically punished and without being truly sorry what op has told you then is three things a that it should be their choice whether they live or die b that they that the reason they choose to uh, the that they chose the death penalty was because they felt regret and guilt and uh, see that the victim's family will feel like they got a uh, closure so that that penalty be granted right why are we win this then two large reasons a the argument of freedom of speech doesn't stand at all because this criminal was free he chose to commit this because he he chose to commit this unspeakable crime right he was free he had his freedom he got he he brought this life upon him right um yes freedom of speech is a prized quality and and it's so loved that the best form of punishment that the government has decided is to put the criminal in jail and take away his freedom right that's the very point of the punishment so no it shouldn't be his choice he brought this life upon himself right B the proposition insists that these criminals are so warm and fuzzy that they felt remorse and that's why they would ask the government to kill them no the reason they would ask the government to kill them and the, the reason they would ask the government for a death penalty is for selfish reasons so that that person so that the criminal's life of torment can end because in this jail he's being heavily tormented it's a jail where the worst of the worst people go right no panel that The, the the proposition has not engaged with the argument of potential um, for discriminatory application for the de- of death penalty uh, neither have they strongly engaged um, with the argument of freedom of speech because ultimately our argument stands right thank you here i would like to conclude my house at large in this speech i will be talking about the clashes in this debate as well as the strong arguments pro- provided by our team team proposition one of the main points covered in this debate were whether people should be given an easy way out which is the death penalty now again and again the opposition fails to understand that death penalty is not an easy way out let's say that you were in prison and you were given the option whether you want to stay in there and rot in prison or do you want to go in the sulfurous flames of hell for committing the bad crime that they did how can you say that death penalty is an easier way out you do not know what can happen after death you know the after uh, after life what may happen there something really bad can happen then a uh, second point that was mentioned in this debate was that mercy should be show, uh, could be shown due to the option of a death penalty we again ask you how is mercy so shown by the option of a death penalty it is not possible that a death penalty is any easier than living in prison prison and death penalty are equally bad no one would want to choose death penalty or would want to go to prison but now that that person has committed a crime that person would end up in prison but then the option to go to uh, to have the death penalty should also be available because both of them are equally equally they are they are very difficult choices to make it is like your life your life would either end or your life would just carry on with nothing in it then another point was mentioned that death would be equal to freedom opposition mentioned this that if a person dies then that person would get freedom how would they get freedom what if that person because of committing that very wrong crime as you rightly mentioned 
would um after death would that person still go to heaven or you know become a human again or probably that person would go to the sulfurous flames of hell would that person want to go there i'm sure not then you also mentioned that do the prisoners deserve the suffering this is something that is important uh if the prisoner does deserve the suffering then yes that prisoner is in a prison but then at the same time death is an equally big suffering death is something that is easy to talk about but not easy to feel opposition went on and on to talk about how death is an e easier choice and you know how uh, the proposition was not able to provide examples on how um, you know death and prison are the same thing and we all were contradicting each other however i think you missed the main point the main point covered in all your speeches was that death is an easier way out however we spoke about other arguments as well which were very well framed you guys did not take the point that we provided death and prison are equally bad now with this we in team proposition had a leg up in this debate on behalf of my team i would like to rest my case but never my voice thank you